So have you ever been talking to a group of people and you thought you were the most knowledgeable person in the group? I don't want to say the smartest, but the most knowledgeable and you're going on and on. And then somebody asks a question and you immediately know that you are not the most knowledgeable person in the room. Well, that just happened to me very recently, right? I got stumped by my own babble. And it was actually very enlightening. And if you take criticism well, this is very, very useful, right? I took what this person had to say. I reevaluated my entire portfolio, my entire situation, and also the things that I say about index funds. And I just wanted to share that with you. I want to tell you what happened after that conversation, what that conversation was about, and how I reevaluated my portfolio's index fund holding and what I was doing outside of my index fund investing to show you like, all right, I, w- I, was, r- I was wrong. I guess I, maybe I was just misinformed. Let's, let's just dive right into it. For those that have been following me for a while, you know that I am an index fund fanboy, right? Total stock market, S&P 500, doesn't matter so much. I love index funds. And if you don't know what an index fund is, it's essentially a very, very special type of mutual fund where we pool a bunch of stocks together. And then instead of a actively managed fund that's really, really expensive, that very rarely historically beats the indexes over time, we're going to go with a passively less expensive fund that instead of being designed to beat a market or beat an index, we're okay just sticking with it. I'm not trying to beat the S&P 500 or the total stock market. If I can stick right with it, that's good enough for me. And there's one thing that really when you're learning about index funds is that every company is not weighted inside that fund the same. So for example, VTSAX has over 3,500 companies in it, but each one of those 3,500 is not divided the same. It's invested into the companies depending on their size. So right now, Apple being at the top of the heap for total stock market, as well as the S&P 500, That's kind of where this conversation led. Now, I'm not just going to tell you about this story. I'm going to show you my whole portfolio, show you all the percentages and everything and and some of the things that I need to change. But essentially, I was going back and forth with somebody, a a small group of people about, you know, the difference between index funds and picking individual stocks because there are people that are just against index funds, right? And there are some people that are against picking individual stocks. There's no right or wrong answer. It really depends on you. And we were going back and forth, this, that, and the other thing. And I was talking about my number one fear about picking stock was becoming over leveraged in one stock, meaning one stock was too much percentage of my overall portfolio. And that led to like, okay, well, what's What's a comfortable amount for you? And I said, you know, five to 10% is, you know, 10% would be the absolute max that I'd ever want one company in my whole entire net worth, you know, to be riding on. And we're going back, okay, yeah, this, that, and the other thing. And then somebody raised their hand and was like, hey, Brad, with what you're telling me, you are way above, you know, those percentages for a couple of different companies. And I was like, tell me more. Like, I was like, okay, can you give me an example? And they just frankly said, well, how much weight is Apple inside VTSAX? How much weight is Apple in VGT and VUG and these other indexes? And I was like, I think three to five. I I really, I had no idea. All I really knew was what the companies were, like the top 10 holdings inside VTSAX and the top 10 holdings in all of these other funds. But I didn't really ever dive deep into the percentages of each fund and how that was reflecting an overall million dollar portfolio. Now, I was super skeptical about it, but I didn't really argue because I didn't really know. And I figured I was either gonna go home and make a video about how I was right and this guy was wrong, or I was gonna go home and make this video about how I really didn't know and I'm glad now that I do because Like I said, it changed the moves that I'm going to be making. I had to sell off some things and do some rebalancing because when I looked at it and I broke everything down, all right, I I took, I took my entire portfolio. I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, I have over 10% in like three or four companies. Let's, let's look at the spreadsheet that I made. It took me hours. I tried to organize it so it doesn't look just like a complete mess. Let's look at that. I'll, I'll discuss through as we look at some of these metrics. Okay, so for me to know exactly what was going on, first I listed all my accounts, and this doesn't include real estate, doesn't include cash, it doesn't, it's just 
money that is invested. And pretty much the way I broke it down is my 457s, my 403Bs, which used to be with Voya, my new 403Bs, and M1 Finance, a Robin, all my different brokerages, and all my crypto. Okay. Then what I did was list the investments and also the percentages. Guys, I'm going to use percentages for this, not because I, I don't want to show the amount of money. I, I'm really an open book. Those that know me personally know I, I'll tell you what my net worth is, but I just wanted to hide the amount because I know that sometimes people can get really, really defensive when they see an amount of money, right? They can be like, oh, well, it's so easy for you when you're doing that. Like, if you think about percentages, I think it's much easier to be relatable. You can think about this as a $100 portfolio if you want. A 100 portfolio versus a million portfolio, you could still use the percentages. And that's really the only reason I'm going to hide the amounts. If, if you really care how much I have in my 457, DM me. And I'll tell you how much is in there. It doesn't really matter that much. But we can see that th there's some stocks in here, right? And what you will see is you'll be like, Brad, where's your dividend stocks? That's a video coming soon. Yeah, I sold off all my dividend stocks. Stand by for that video coming up. But these are all of the index funds and stocks that I own. This is my entire portfolio. And what I did was I simplified it even further to show that I am invested into the total stock market index funds at about 32%. 50% is the S&P 500. And then other index funds, I have VUG, I have VYM, and I think I have VGT as well. So I have a couple other index funds that I don't really add too much to them. They were kind of just there, but that's a 7%. So we see that my overall net worth is 93% index funds, okay? Guys, you can be a millionaire with just index funds, right? But that's not the point. The point is, I really didn't know what that meant as far as like my stocks and everything like that. I have 6% in stocks and then like a half percent in Bitcoin that brings everything to 100%. So this is really my, my pie, right? I have 93% in index funds and about 7% in stocks and just a, a, a dash of crypto. So what did I do next? Okay. To see what this guy was talking about as far as like, am I over leveraged? I took the top 10 holdings in each particular fund that I owned, all right? Not the whole thing, that would be like impossible, but what I did was I listed all of the funds that I have. I have VOO, VGT, all these other things here, and I sorted them, okay? And what I began to see was a lot of them you know, overlapped, or a lot of them had pretty much had the same amount of holdings. Guys, if you just invest in VTSAX, your Apple position will be 4.73% of your portfolio. That's the mindset I was thinking. I said, well, I have a ton of VOO and I have a ton of VTSAX. So at about that 5% range, I thought that I was good. Well, it turned out, you know, things that I didn't look at as far as like, VGT, I knew that they were heavily weighted in Apple, but I know 20% or VUG at 10%. And what really threw it off were the options plays because I'm using Apple as an example. And I'm going to show you all these in a second, but I have leaps options with Apple, which are have values of thousands of dollars. So that would sway my percentage of owning or ownership in Apple in my overall portfolio. So I pretty much listed all these, then I took these amounts. How much money did I have invested? This is how much money I have invested inside VOO, and then I converted that amount of money to a, a, a dollar amount here. Now, these percentages here, if you're wondering what these are, this is the top 10 holdings of VOO, a 500 fund company. These top 10 make up 27% of that entire fund. I think the biggest one is VGT. The top 10% which goes down to 1.9, they make up almost 60% of that fund. So these are things I didn't really know. The top 10 holdings for VTSAX, 21%. And this is all public information. This is stuff I could have went and looked up. Then, after I had this laid out, I went and I listed all my stocks. So let's unlock these now. This is a list of every stock that's inside one of these top 10 holdings as well as the stocks that I own. Okay, so that's what I did. I listed all of them. Now, granted, I own many, many more, but these are going to be the ones that are the driving force inside my portfolio. 
Then I went back and I summed up everything that was Apple. I summed up this box. I summed up this box. I summed up exact. I summed up everywhere that I have Apple inside options, spreads, everything. I did the same for Microsoft. I went all the way down the list. Okay. This is the total percentage in just those top 10 holdings. So inside that bulk, inside the driving force of my portfolio, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Google, and Tesla were all above 5%, right? This is a major, ma Apple was, I was flying with Apple, almost 19% of all of this. 18% of the 93 was all inside Apple. Now, that, it wasn't like fearful, but it was like, whoa, whoa like maybe I should be doing leaps options with other things that won't over leverage me into Apple. I then took, so this was pretty much the percentage of money dependent uh, upon how much money was inside each of these percentages. Now this is the total portfolio. So I took the amount of money and I divided it by everything, the whole pot, right? All of the stocks. And this percentage came out a little bit differently. So this came to 27% of my net worth is inside all of these stocks. And we can see Apple right there at 5.21% of my overall net worth. Microsoft, 4.87. It was a very big eye-opener for me. Uh, this is okay. I was like a little happy. I was like, all right, well, Apple is not crazy. It's definitely crazy weighted inside my index funds. Like this, this made me say to myself, okay, do I really need to be adding some more money into VGT where VGT has 20% weighted in on Apple? right? The eye opener for me and the point that I want to make to you is that when you know simple things like this, I know to back off on my Apple plays. I know that I'm good when it comes to Microsoft and Amazon. And it looks like other things that I am bullish on, I can start to work up. I can start to build my Starbucks and my Tesla if I really want to, my Vuzix, my Disney's, all these other stocks that I love, I can build them up because they really are not such a huge driving force inside my portfolio. The other bit of fresh air that came along with this was knowing what a small percentage some of these stocks really are when it comes to your overall net worth. Guys, this is pretty much my main exposure. If we're, we're in column two here and that goes down to column 33 or 34, guys, these 30 stocks are what's going to really drive my portfolio. But when I look at it like this, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Tesla, the things that really drive the market, right? I know that I don't need to be doing individual plays with them. I know, I learned a couple of things. Stocks, I can be a little bit more than 6%. I am a little bit, in my opinion, overweighted inside index funds. It lets me spend a little bit more money. But what this exercise also did was allow, show me like what I could spend money on and maybe some things that I probably shouldn't avoid. I love leaps options. I love the poor man's covered call with Apple. But do I really need to have $5,000 tied up in that? I, I don't really know on top of all the other exposure. Take this for what it will, but I, I think the point that I want to make, guys, is number one, you could be heavily weighted in an index fund, and this is kind of what it will look like. This is the exposure that you are going to get if you are heavily weighted inside index funds, and why it's important to really know the overlapping stocks and how much percentage of weight each one of these funds is. It is best not to be the smartest person in the room. And this was a great example why here I am spouting about how I, I know exactly what my holdings are and I know how I'm protected. And turns out I wasn't really that right, guys. I hope the video at least opened your eyes or gave you some insight to your own portfolio and some things that you are doing and the moves that you're making, whether you're an index fund investor, an options trader, individual stock picker. It's really up to you. Personal finance is personal. Until I catch you guys on the next one, stay positive, work really, really hard, and always please be kind to other people. Hope you have yourself an amazing day and an even better tomorrow.